meeting with the approval of previous minutes since there is no public comment. It has to do with amending the minutes? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, number under goals, number five, on the top of page two, it says include preemptive planning for pests. But then underneath it, it has all those bullet points that I think those are not related to that item. It, it makes it look like they're part of that pest planning, but those look okay. to me like separate. So are those things that didn't rise to the level of top five, but were also goals? Okay, yeah. so maybe just Terry, when you <coughs> amend these, you just remove the indentation. Okay. And 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 maybe put other goals. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm looking at the spreadsheet. That was number six. Identify ways. And all the others were, yeah, others. Okay, so you're saying that the, the first bullet should be number six? Well, actually, we had one of the top five, and all the others were. Um, so these like were the amended ones. Okay. okay. All the bullet points just fall under other. Okay. Yeah. I just have a question. Is Fruit Street residents, does that mean the housing or Fruit Street residents under Trina or Hampton? Looking for advice. Yeah, yeah Arbor Day, yeah. Fruit Street residents were inquiring. There was public housing oh. and swing. Oh. And public housing. Right. Sorry, yeah, public right. housing. Okay. Wanted to know how to go about. Right. Okay, so it's not all Fruit Street residents. It's the is that Housing Authority? Yeah, Housing Authority. Housing Authority. Uh, housing they needed to go to Housing Authority. Okay. But that they could help the volunteers. Is that for planting trees? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There were a lot of trees that came out along there. Yes. Well, we'll talk about that. We'll that I move that we accept the minutes as amended. Second. I would like just another moment to read it. Okay. Since yeah. I, I wasn't at the last meeting, so oh, yeah. for me it's kind of new information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. But then again, I'm going to abstain, so we can move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I will abstain. ceremony about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, no, two weeks ago, right, in uh, Arlington. And there were some, I thought, some excellent presentations. One related to climate change I found really interesting. Yeah. And uh, we were vetted with a 10-year Tree USA, uh, Tree City USA award and a growth award. So that felt great. That's about it. Um, I was going to mention the thing, Jonathan, that you had forwarded to me, but maybe we can just um, sh shelve that until we get to Tree on Hampton. Is that okay? Okay. There was a good article about that in the book. About the tree website? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw yeah. that. That's thanks to Rich. You put out a press release. Yeah, that was that was excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got a feeling.
What's that? They have it hanging up in my room now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Above the folder. Yeah. 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 Everyone saw the doodle poll. So we will be having one meeting in July and one meeting in August. It's clear to everybody. I think that's it for the chair report. If anything else comes up, we'll go under, under other business. Well, this is why they took them out. I feel special. I feel special. Yeah, that took a lot of work. <laughs> All right, um, Rich, you're up to bat. Uh, so, a couple of things. So, the, the um, contract for the machines that we're going to purchase from our industry has been signed by the mayor to the tune of uh, $18,000 for change. So, that'll be our tree, inventory, uh, tree stock that's going to finish off. The majority of South Street and the other plantings that we have for this coming season. Um, we have planted to date 103 trees since uh, I think Arbor, uh, Arbor uh, Day, or the day, the day after Day. Wow. That's 2017, right? Because is that when you That's began? correct. Okay. Yes. Yep. And we've taken down over 28 trees so far. Do you know the ratio of setback versus public shade? Uh, not off the top of my head, no, I can get the information. But, but, but I, I could comment. There have been very few setbacks, and mostly you planted a whole lot of underwater trees. Great. Okay. So it's mostly. On what streets? Well, uh, there's South Street. There's and uh, there, there's a fair number, there are a few of them on uh, Bridge Street and uh, at Bridge Road and Spring Hill Road. There were some, or, uh, four. Yeah, four there. Crescent, Monotop, Morningside, Yeah, but that was actually set. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And these, and I, I'm, I'm presuming, correct me if I'm wrong, that you planted trees on these other tree, other streets that we hadn't identified as priority because they were a better match, the trees were a better match for the sites than South Street? Okay, so most, most of the trees are, that we planted um, are <coughs> reactions to requests. And so that even when people were requesting the tree belt, on that. Okay. so um, yeah. not all. Okay, well, I'd love a breakdown because I, I just want to make sure that we're attending to our priorities, our, tr our priority plantings. And it, yeah, makes, okay. and it makes sense to me that if the, if the trees that we want to go in South Street aren't available and therefore we're, we're choosing other high priority areas, no, or no, it, they're, they're, those places are places we had already previous commitments. Okay. And because we purchased those trees last year, yeah. before we decided to, before the commission decided to make South Street a priority, we have to find a home for them in order to get them all planted and then continue uh, continuing priority, prioritizing projects and then find the nursery stock to fill that project. So that's part of what, why we're, we're at, where we're at. We have about 20, 20 trees left in the 20. After this weekend, there'll, there'll be the 20 trees. So we have There's a weekend plant of 12. So we have 32 trees right now. So the 30, actually 34, we have two free trees from the uh, National Grid. So they brought us to the red maple. For our mitigation. So, so I, I haven't actually necessarily seen exactly what's on the list for the fall, but I believe there are very few underwater trees in the fall, so it will be a relatively higher percentage of setback trees in the fall than in the spring. Okay. Which, which doesn't mean though, that we can't go after some underwater trees in the project. Oh, right. Because after after we, you know, the, this contract we have will be, the money will be encumbered, and we will have about $12,000 left in our tree plant. Account. That I don't know
anything else in your shirt? Or your uh, Who's helping me uh, last week and this week? Uh, she was halfway done last week and was going to have it for this meeting, and then her kids got sick, so uh, she thought she could have it for me by Sunday. Um, I'm leaving town Friday with limited uh, internet access, so when I get access to the internet, I'll send it to you. Okay. Right. Or she yeah. can CC me um, when she sends to you. Do you, okay. want, do you want to give it a, a last look? Or do you feel like? Uh, oh, I just assumed we were all going to give it a last look. Okay. That's, what, that's right. what I was under. I, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure, uh, honestly, what stage we're at. Uh huh. I think that I think that my last understanding was that I just needed to get it into a better format, and she's okay. going to include the Vermont uh, guidelines and then uh, a sheet on planting that Jay gave me and then there'll be opportunity in the future to add more stuff uh -huh. as we need to. Okay. All right. Why don't you just have well, her CC me? Okay. And then and that's the fastest way that we can get it out okay. to everybody. Okay. All right. Great. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. So Sunday. Barring in you know, the pool or something. <laughs> Yes. Uh, 
update on summer summer and fall plantings you've already given a little bit rich but it sounds uh, you know we got an email from a resident of Monotuck Street and of course everyone knows that Monotuck Street has been in the news a lot lately with the uh, fatality with the biking with the biker and also the revelation that there has been a long history of attempts to at traffic calming and requests for traffic calming in that area. So I actually wasn't surprised, I was sort of expecting um, a request from the neighbors to, to have some tree planters. Um, I think this raises an interesting question. Um, I'll just speak first from my personal perspective on how to respond in real time to real life circumstances like an incident and also maintain our schedule of priority plantings that you know might be on streets that are even um, higher have even higher traffic calming issues um, you know there's a lot of a lot of emotional response around a particular event and that's totally reasonable and it's sometimes an opportunity but we also have we have to have that measured balance between respo response reaction and proaction and keep moving along a path of um, tra especially traffic calming in, in areas that we identify that we've already identified as high priority so um, I, I want to make sure that we don't just react and and just throw all our our eggs over to a new stream um, in, in in response to something like this on the other hand I, I do want to demonstrate uh, that we we hear their um, request and that we will take it under serious consideration so I open it up to other people's comments so, uh, I met with um, one of the people from that neighborhood because I was actually on um, planting a tree uh, two days ago. And I uh, came over. So we've been planting a few trees on it, just not having to do with that. And um, this goes to the neighborhood based volunteer planting pilot, I guess. Mm -hmm. A big experience on Lincoln and Ave. Incredibly wonderful. The trees just flew into the ground, 11 trees in, in two hours, starting at four one afternoon. So, because the neighborhood all came out. And, uh, actually, eventually you'll see posted on the website, one of the trees got planted by six and eight year olds entirely, with the instruction of a huh. arborist. But it's kind of cute, they're all, they're all wearing vests and covered around the street. So that was good. And I think just in relation to Nanita, it sounds like I mean, I, I'm, I'm digging and, and great. Uh, Jen was out this weekend and uh, Sue was out. But when Nantuck comes along and says, and they'll develop the sites and they'll dig the trees, that, all, that has a persuasive uh, argument because it's, it's kind of a plan of how to make this whole project sustainable is to get people in the neighborhood to identify the sites and dig the holes. That's, that's what happened in some sense on Lincoln. And uh, there are, I have a small list of streets that's developing where there are other people. Uh, so on the corner of South Street and Charles, there's a little group on there that do some work. And uh, Manitou, Hooker, Stoddard, Warfield has been great. There, there are about eight trees or 10 going there. And we're at the spot and people are kind of just uh, So that's. That's just a, a light to put on it. I, I don't think there's a lot of, it's not exactly a choice in some ways because there's so many trees going in that without the help, it's not sustainable. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. need that. Okay. Other thoughts? I have a question. Um, what do we already have planned as far as trees that are planned to go in on the Are there any other ones besides the ones no, there, no, there are no trees planned. And, and uh, I, even though I, to speak to this guy next. What can be done, as far as I can see, the big opportunities are under wire, which you know, don't, aren't as exciting, just like on South Street, not much fun. and then setbacks. So I think it'll really come down to what they can do as a group to get setback planning. I mean, there, there are four setback plans that have either been done, three done, one to go on that street. So that's tiny, that's my, you know, I think, uh, I don't know how I live there. You know, I've been on that street. That's tiny, and there are a whole lot of houses there. Mm -hmm. 
expectations are. And if they come up with the demand for them, I don't think that we have a tree shortage. I think the biggest shortage is developing sites and the, and the labor to put the tree. So if they come up with a request mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, for trees and develop sites, Mm -hmm. I don't see a, I don't see a, I don't see a conflict. Um, South Street, as Rich said, is going is going to get planted. I mean, it's possible that we'll come up short a few trees in the fall, just because they won't go really happen. But we'll, by spring, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, I missed this. Uh, how many trees do we have left? On South Street? No, on the other side. In the, in the yard. Thirty-two. Oh, I mean, thirty-two. There are thirty-two unplanted trees of which twelve. Are in this weekend, so they're already kind of companies gone. But there's going to be new trees in the fall. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. the yeah, the goal is yeah. 200 to 250 trees a year. But I mean, before that, 30. This whole spring really was about cleaning out what we would already purchased and what was in the yard. That's correct. And identifying a project that utilizes the other, the, the large amount of our trees that we actually. Right. Uh, had already purchased. And it just happened that South Street just worked, out really well. worked well with that mm -hmm. with that project. It was, it was by chance. I mean, it, by chance we wouldn't necessarily have that many underwater trees or that many salt tolerant underwater trees. Other comments about uh, I mean, yeah, I, have a couple. I think kind of I think we should kind of zoom out just a little bit and not look at the mechanics of planting. The actual uh, relationship that this commission could actually have with the transportation department. There's a, you know, a, a, a commission that runs parallel to this commission, charged with a different mission. But <clears throat> I think that traffic calming, from a lot of articles that I've read, obviously, and the effect that it's actually had, they work side and you know side by side. So we were down there this past week and we built two, sorry, the last week we built two uh, speed humps there. As I was standing in the tree belt taking photos of the guys doing the work, you know, I'm standing under under wire. There's not one single tree on that on that section of Nantucket the Street. We, um, the resident actually emailed about the other end of Nantucket, which is much wider, much larger buildings. Uh, but I was on the more the residential end. That's the commercial end. Mm -hmm. But it's it's really about the whole street, and I think it would be um, there's a lot of money involved in traffic coming. The mayor puts away money for the department to actually do a lot of traffic calming uh, studies. And I think Terry can attest that she was the, she was on the, uh, the clerk who served on that commission for quite some time. But I think it would be a good chance to actually build a partnership between this commission and that commission. And actually, the other thing that would actually probably help us is if we could get Transportation and Parking Commission to somewhere in their traffic calming manual reference to trees and how trees are an effective uh, traffic com traffic calming uh, influence on, on folks. And so when they go to do traffic calming projects, not only do they actually look at the data of crash data, um, average daily traffic, um, crosswalks, distance of the roadway, um, but actually what is planted on the street for street trees. So are you saying that currently the manual does not reference? That's correct. It okay, that is, but that it, is a problem. It, it's really, it's really a lot about engineering yeah, sure. data and yeah. traffic data and you know there's a whole and process that residents have to go through, but I think it would be good to kind of zoom out and before we honor any requests, we, we somehow forge a partnership or the commission forge a partnership with other commissions to try to make this part of the overall traffic calming manual, okay. which then would in turn would say, we build two speed humps here for this in this area, then we're going to plant X number of trees. Uh, is that manual available online? Uh, at the moment, it's being reviewed. It got rewritten, so I have not seen it yet. Is it in in progress review? It is in so progress. would this would this be a golden time for me to show up at a meeting? There is that possibility. Okay, so I should. Do you know who the chair is? Ryan. Ryan? No. Okay. So I should um, contact Ryan and um, ask to be placed on the agenda, and and anyone else can come, yep. and I can make that pitch. But I should do it after reviewing the manual, just to confirm. Is it the engineering department that decides what's 
Well, the engineering department of local, there's, there's a couple different versions of it. There's the original version that was rewritten a few years ago, and now it's being rewritten again because there was. When people would actually request, uh, you know, they would request to have a traffic calming study done in the neighborhood, they would make, and that would come to the TPC, and the TPC would decide whether or not um, it was warranted based upon uh, the, the data of that particular neighborhood or particular street, then they would issue, they would issue it. And then they, the engineering department would come back and they would report to the committee, the commission, for the findings, and then the commission would make the recommendation as to whether or not they would actually, what kind of traffic counting they would do, or no traffic counting. Um, but then at that point, it would, it kind of just went nowhere. So they had to rewrite the manual, so after it reaches that level, the commission makes a recommendation. And, be, and because of the changes in the administration of the DPW, which like doesn't come before the public works anymore, um, the mayor now makes the final decision as to whether or not. So there's a couple other layers in there, but I think the actual hard data that they use, the driven data to actually decide where to put these structures does not change. I think it's more administrative. Okay, and is there a current list of top priority streets? Uh, or they, some kind of tier structure? They have, so what they did is they've gone back to revisit streets that were originally went through the process of the actual tra traffic calming uh, application and um, received approval for traffic calming because nothing happens. They're trying to clean up their backlog. So much of what we're doing, trying to clean up the trees that we have. So I don't know where they stand. I don't go to TPC meetings typically. I don't find that information out though. Okay. If anyone, if anyone else would, would like to speak, I'd like to speak after that person. Oh, speak about uh, on this subject. I, I would like a chance to speak, but I want to make sure that every other commissioner has gotten a chance to speak about traffic. Uh, about not yeah. About basically looking looking at this non attack case and figuring out how we want to react and, and what we want to learn from it. Go ahead. You, I, you were I think that I'd like, I like the uh, neighborhood format getting people in that area, if they're enthused about doing it, I think that's that's the format that we really need to work on. Because it uh, takes a lot of stress off of all the volunteers and it gets people more invested in the trees, mm -hmm. taking care of them later. Okay. So I think that's a good model to use. And we're going to supply the trees. Is that how it works? Oh yeah. And, well, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, so again, this is where you kind of got to zoom out. And the, the other thing too is, or the other thing too is that how, you know, how much, how much energy, how much energy do you want to actually invest in every single traffic on the application? And I agree. I think Lily is correct in what you said. You know, we, we have to create a balance. We don't want to change what what we are trying to accomplish because they have seven traffic calming applications for neighborhood traffic calming. And now all the trees we have are going to those areas. I, I think that there's a, a chance to actually increase the level of traffic calming assistance to plant trees where maybe we could have someone else plant the trees. I mean, we build, it, we build the speed homes presently, but if we get a lot of requests to do this work, we may end up having to farm it out. So my, my point is, is that if we have to farm out the work in the world, then we can farm out the planting as well. And that can be part of traffic calming mitigation funds. So that's where the funding would come yep. from? Yeah, and then that way there, the funding that we receive for tree, street tree planting would, would be totally different. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's where the buy-in from TPC mm -hmm. would be important because we would want to try to, you know, put the two together mm -hmm. and say, this is a whole package. You get speed humps, you get markings, you get street signs, mm -hmm. and you get street trees. Interesting. All together. Okay. And it frees us up from huh. having to commit our, it's not that it's not a priority, but we have our, we have the commission our own priorities to plant gateways, certain amount of setbacks, and so on and so forth. And we don't, we don't want to deviate from that, I don't think. So okay. That's why I think the partnership would be good. Right, right. Exploring it anyway. Okay. Does everyone agree that, yeah. um, uh, that I should reach out to Ryan O'Donnell? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'd like just a chance to chime in here. Because I do think that this does dovetail nicely into the conversation about neighborhood-based volunteer planting. Um, so 
you know, I've studied the case of Amherst, and I know some of the, some other people in this room have, in which um, several times a year they put the word out, and it's actually an application online, um, for neighborhoods to uh, submit requests for plantings. And they have to answer some questions about what they're able to offer in return, what kind of volunteer resources and so forth they can offer. And I, I think it's a good model, and I think that we can perhaps, I haven't looked at their site lately, but I think that perhaps we can tie some other metrics into it when judging one neighborhood against another. Because what they do is they literally get, in years past, less so now, less so, now, now they're having fewer and fewer neighborhoods make requests, but, but before they had numerous neighborhoods and they had to judge one against the other in determining what they were gonna do for that project period. And I think that we should look at a number of criteria, one of which is, uh, you know, where they fall on the city's priority list for traffic calming. But another could be what sort of resources they're bringing to the table. Uh, you know, whether it be volunteers or, or you know, are they going to, I don't know, put on a community potluck or, so, or, or uh, you know, just what, what can we do to make this sustainable and a truly a community building? Um, so I, I would love for us to consider this model and to maybe, you know, have a go at flying it up the flagpole. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's something, I haven't even approached Tree Northampton about this because I don't want to presume that it's something you guys can take on, but I think it's something that we should explore. And if you are interested, then we certainly can have that conversation. Um, but I, I want to make sure that if, uh, I, I think it'll just build a whole bunch of excitement and awareness about about our tree planting project and, and it'll build a community. So uh, I would love for us to consider, and maybe we need to form a, a small subcommittee, what sort of application we would, we would create for um, judging neighborhoods and neighborhood projects. Shape them as to what kind of project we're looking for. So give them some idea. Like you'd like a, I don't know what the answer is, like two blocks, one block, half a block, you know, whatever place. Like if you have six trees or more or whatever it is. So that's sort of like you can plug in. I do want to say that up until now, we have fewer people. In other words, it's, we're not we're not low on trees. 250 trees covers all the requests. You mean you're not low on tree requests? Right, right. In other words, if people come and want trees right now, yeah. I don't think it will be a matter of wow. sorting. Like, if people offer resources, like say, we, we want on our block and we're going to help them or we want eight trees, I don't think we're going to, at the moment, I see the, the wave yet of requests that would overwhelm our Well, response. that's where PR comes in. Yeah. You know, we put out a press release, we make a big, big show yeah. of this and we let the entire city know that, that everyone's in equal standing at the beginning yeah. and that these are our criteria for judging them and you know then it doesn't become a, oh the privileged folks who are always in the know are first in line you know it becomes more of we get the word out through all the counselors and their award lists yeah. and so I, I don't want to jump too far ahead of the other one because I still I want to just wrap up the traffic coming but I just see that as, as potentially tied in however my, my thinking was prior to Rich's um, comments about how there's potential traffic calming money in this, and I feel like that makes it a little different. If, the, if it becomes part of a, of a, like you said, outsourced traffic calming project that is funded not through our limited tree planting funds, then I would support that too, because I feel like, why not? 
if we can get more money for well, trees or yeah, they, 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 right that's my suggestion as to why it would be important to get that directly drilled right into the traffic county manual yeah. because then the traffic county funds can be there's transparency that are being used for traffic county including the tree you know, plant okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. do you want me to be that explicit when I when I go and speak to them that that this is that, that putting putting traffic calming mitigation money toward it, to include trees in a given project is a good use of their funds. Okay. All right. Would it be appropriate to plant the tree in um, memory of the biker who was killed? I think that if we do a project on Monotuck Street, we could certainly raise that as a possibility. Uh, it's an interesting question. I feel like we've already got a couple of memorial trees we still need to get in the ground. I'm, I'm really conscious of the fact that we still haven't planted a tree in honor of Ed and Huntley. <laughs> um, so I, I think, it's, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a sweet idea, and I think it also raises the whole issue of, do we have a memorial tree program? And what, what, what does that look like? And no, no one has really decided to run with that yet. And I'm not, a, I'm not, that's not in any way anyone's fault, because we're all doing lots of great things. But um, I. I personally don't think it's something we should initiate. Mm -hmm. I think if someone's interested in doing that, yeah. we could help support them. But I don't think it's something that we need. Yeah, I think until we have a, 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 a memorial tree program that we shouldn't just, I feel like Ed Huntley is an exception. You know, he was the director of the DPW and that feels right. But um, I, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. All right, so I want to wrap this up because I want to make sure we, oh wow. So I would suggest oh, having a sub, I mean, I think it would be a good idea to have a subcommittee just to like, because you got two kind of satellites out here, yeah. but there may be times that I, I think we do. I see your point, and like we have to have some structure, but also uh, being able to be a little bit flexible. Um, because, like what Jay said, okay, if they're fired up, yeah, and who knows, maybe somebody says, oh yeah, we got ten trees donated. You know, we need it, it, whatever. You know, I think that. Uh, it is a good point because when you create a, a, a system like this that has rigid deadlines and a, you know, you're advertising the transparency, which is a good thing, what it does is it does hem you in. It means mm -hmm. that you can't be as nimble mm -hmm. and there, you know, there are pros and cons to that. So I do think we need to just sit down and look at all the right. unintended consequences of any, any choices we make. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so I've jumped a little bit ahead. Let's first wrap up the transportation, uh, the, the traffic calming piece, come back to the neighborhood-based volunteer planting project, uh, pilot and see what kind of to-dos we want out of that. Any, so any further comments about, uh, about the non-attack planting? Are, are, do we... Is somebody gonna contact them? Well, I think some kind of response is warranted. Yeah, we... But I, I, I don't... I don't know. Uh, Rich, what, what were your thoughts well, on I, this particular request? I think that we, at this point, because there is the traffic calming piece of this is like disconnected in a sense from what the transportation park does. I, I think that it's, we can probably honor, we should probably tell them that we're going to look at plant, we're going to look at putting uh, some type of a planting plan together in the, in the, in the future. Presently, we have all the trees we have for this year of our committee. So we, I think we have to give them some kind of answer and like provide them some kind of plant material at some point. The question is, is that you know we have to go down there. Navy Tree identified a bunch of vacant sites in that in that area, but that area is uh, it's not. Remember, certain director. One side of her stuff is there's a lot of tree belt plant uh, trees, but on the other side, once you get past the David Ruggles Center, there's not a lot, it's a lot of blacktop and a lot of concrete. So it's going to require some work to plant some trees in that area that's, you know, where she's asking. So oh. I, I think we need to go, I think I'll just send an email that we're taking your request under, you know, under advisement or we're taking your request and actually want to go to the site and determine you know, what we can do going uh, 
forward in the future of the president. Because I don't want to commit to doing this yeah. and then adding more work to us right, this year. Right. Because we've already we've already committed to the material we have. Uh, I don't want to add it. And we project. and we had a it, it's not official, but we've been there's been murmurings of our next priority is route none. Uh, and and so, which we know has major traffic calming issues too. People have been killed, pedestrians have been killed on Route 9 too. Fast Smith College. Uh, so I, um, what what I would hope we might include is that we're we're discussing this concept of a neighborhood based. It's not making any promise, but we're discussing a concept of a neighborhood based planting initiative, and that one of the criteria would be. Uh, the, um, what is, how, how high that street rises in terms of traffic calming priority. Yeah. It doesn't make it doesn't make a promise because it, we don't know if other streets rise way higher than Montauk Street. Yeah, I, I just don't. I, I just want us to be data driven and not emotionally reactive. Uh, on the other hand, it's not just the data of traffic calming dependent on who's the setback plan, for instance, it's their willingness to organize the setback plan. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you'll, that you'll find when you try and have these neighborhood plans is in order to get sort of a social equity, you have to, you'll have to depend on setback plans. Because generally speaking, yes. neighborhoods that are low, have lower, lower income, there's less appealing uh, tree belts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or nothing. So, but that's our tree information we could bring into the mix. Right, but I guess what I'm saying is that because of that, the only way of getting that equity is to plant setback. Sure. Plant. And so in order, in order to do the setback plan, is the only way of doing it sustainably is to get neighborhoods to organize yeah. so that they not in the neighbors to organize. Right. Well, it so, seems like there's a lot of um, motivation for that on the next Yes, so exactly. So I'm saying I, I wouldn't want to blunt that enthusiasm on their part. If they want to knock on doors and get permissions to plant setback trees, then uh, I don't think we have to necessarily wait to find out what the priority is in terms of traffic uh, no, Because we, I agree with you, we don't have to wait with the problem is that we've already committed to planting all these other trees. Yeah. And so we have to be careful. If we, if we tell them to go, go ahead and do their knock on doors and get setback locations, but we can't provide them with the stock, then we've got a problem. Right, but I mean, we have 140 trees coming this fall. Yeah, I, 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 I understand. And, and so for, for me, it looks like, ah, oh, this could be an easy way of, um, easy, nothing's easy, but this could be a good way of using it. So let's, let's, let's try to, to put the, the horse before the car. And let's, let's I, I, I suggest that okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to Ryan O'Donnell. You're gonna you're gonna respond to this to this concerned citizen on Donatuck Street with uh, acknowledging and appreciating her interest and also not committing to anything specific. And then I you know, maybe now we can shift to the actual discussion of a neighborhood-based volunteer planting effort and um, you know, if someone wants to propose that we, we form uh, a, a, a partnership or a, a subcommittee to really hash out the design of this, then we can do that. And I would, I would prefer that we do that before we, we commit to uh, the, our next neighborhood planting. Because for all the reasons we described, <coughs> transparency, equity, um, get, you know, from, promotion of this one wonderful concept, uh, just heightened interest. Well, I, 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 I think that what you're saying, I think we should have people go and figure out some, some kind of system for how this can work. But at the same time, um, there are 140 trees that are about to arrive in September, I guess. And, um, Often it would be three North Hampton would go and do uh, all setback planning uh, to find the site for it. And there's a lot of work involved. And so to the extent that Nanofuck says, well, we have a setback planning, um, I wouldn't like to 
say, well, no, we're not sure you're in the right neighborhood. And then wait, and then wait months later, and then scramble and not get the trees in. Mm -hmm. so there's, a, there's, a, there's a real, even though it's all okay. seems a long way away, it's actually in terms of planning. Now is the time to be planning, planning the fall planning. And do you, have, how many sites do you have now? Already, already, <laughs> oh, that's 60. Okay. But there are 100. 140, but, okay. but there's still a ton of trees to grow on South Street, but at least 50 or 60. Yeah. We're going to do both sides. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is that the, <coughs> the trees that we actually have coming fall are not the trees that go on the water side of the road. Those, that would have to be one addition. The wire side? Yeah, uh, underwire trees. We don't have a lot of underwire trees available out of this contract. But there, there's still a number of non-underwire trees. Correct. There's all the trees that we're going to plant over here on the very end of South Street. Uh, there's four locations there. Yeah. And there's trees on the other side of South Street that we plant right. as well. So, yeah. But these also, we also can get. Okay, so, it's made, so that's only maybe 20 trees. I think really maybe, maybe the way we should frame this is that we should probably, have, you know, I read this email a couple of times, and one of the last emails that she sent was, uh, you know, what would be the best way to provide information to people about public safety information and how to best set back. So I, I may stop over there. It's June 25th at 4 p.m. It's at Main Steel, just to meet with uh, just to meet with folks and give them information and. If they can actually request some setback trees, we can see how many setback plantings they, they request, and maybe out of that group of 40, perhaps just honor some of them. And then, you know, that would just, you know, be like, a good faith effort. Be a good faith effort, feel like that we have heard them, we're right. listening yeah. to them, we're trying to help them. But then in the background, we're working to figure out how, uh, you know, large scale tree planting in places where they request a traffic count and how that all marry right. together. Okay. In the, in the interim. Okay. Because I think what will happen is that people will see this and they'll say, oh, well, right. I have uh, a Union Street there. There's, there's no trees. There's no yep. tree belt. I want yeah. setback trees yep. on Union Street because we have speed humps and the same with William Street. Okay. Same all Good. Street. Okay. So, so does everyone feel comfortable with that? Okay. So it's kind of a yeah, blend of both? Yeah. All right. My next question is um, who, who would like to be part of the neighborhood based volunteer planting subcommittee? I, I, I will cut it down. <laughs> Neighbor, the neighborhood, the neighborhood plan. I, I personally would. Okay. Is it the commissioners? No, not at all. Okay, great. Can you say more about what it is? It's, um, it's developing this concept of several times a year, uh, putting the word out where uh, for a neighborhood-based planting project. And uh, whether that be an online application and then vetting them and then oh, okay. and then executing. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. So it's just, you know, soup to nuts, neighborhood-based, community-based. Mo it's modeled in um, Philadelphia with tree tenders and Amherst with the program I described. It's, um, it's a really wonderful model. I'd be happy Oh, great, okay. We, we got three commissioners, so we better, um, is that a problem? Three is okay, Three's right? Three is fine. Do you want the answer? No. Okay, great. Okay, so Molly, Marilyn, Lily, and Sue, Lufthouse. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Okay, so Okay, and we are five minutes ahead of schedule. Doing well. <laughs> Except for I jumped over one. <laughs> <laughs> so we're five minutes behind schedule. <laughs> F, okay, FY 2017-18 priorities. I just basically put that up because I didn't see the outcome of last week's meeting and last meeting because I wasn't here. So I'm gonna just, you know, educate myself out loud here. So I'm just gonna read what what you all, in my absence, identified, and this was I think part of the first iteration of this, as our top five goals. Okay. Formalize a process or plan for annual tree planting. Create a guiding document for tree planting projects. Okay. And the link, um, at, at the meeting that you missed, we also did tasks. Which related to I, that? And I updated this. Uh, the spreadsheet? Yeah. Uh, okay. You, you can read this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, I see. And is that, that's just for number one? Uh, oh, I see, okay, so. Yeah. For the top five. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll read, read to everyone. So the two main tasks that come out of the formalizing the process for planting, for annual planting is include setback and right-of-way trees and prioritize according to geography, density, roots, social climate justice areas. Traffic calming might be on that. Uh, and then I, I, I would assume that if we were to do a neighborhood neighborhood based planting, that would be wrapped into this too. Yeah. Okay. Two. Expand Rich's tree warden authority slash domain to have more influence and actions taken on public shade trees. Uh, I would say public trees that are not necessarily protected under MGL 87. So maybe we need to be clear about that. There's two number ones. Good point. Oh, yeah. Terry, can we amend the minutes? Yeah, well, those were the two top. Oh, ones. they were equal. They were equal. Ah, I see. Okay. I, I, I mean, I'm hoping Todd. I've kind of nudged Todd in the way of working on this one. But, Rich, do you have thoughts on? It's got to be. I think we really need to. It's got to be ordinance driven. So yes, we, I agree. It's going to be a process. It'll probably take about a year. So we have to create. We have to create language that we would like to see. Uh, get you know, into, uh, made into ordinance yeah. that actually you know, supersedes NGO. Yes, so exactly. Okay. So I, Todd, I mean, Ford. And, and Todd, then, Todd Ford is really, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We all agree with that. And, and the tasks related to that were involve other city depart departments and enhance interdepartmental communication to create and enact Northampton specific public shade tree ordinance. So souped up. Two, create a tree list, regulatory flow chart, and guide for our preferred species for tree planting, and include ordinances. Okay, this I see as part Todd, part J, part J. Anyone else feel involved? Well, the flow chart we were gonna, which and I were gonna need. Okay, good. Can you all make sure that you yeah. August. before you leave today that there's something on the calendar? Did you say August? Yeah. No, I, I'm leaving for a moment. Oh, okay. Maybe by myself. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to meet me. That's fine. Number three, increase stakeholder awareness and involvement in downtown tree planting. Friends, Northampton and Florence. And the task here is include housing department and include park, uh, I assume we transportation and parking commission. You've got parking department. How is the housing depart, depart I assume you mean housing authority, and I'm wondering what's there with downtown treatment, but I'm missing the connection. Is, is this like Fruit Street? There's also other properties. They also own a lot of individual pieces of property on the city. And this rose to the level of top five priorities? It was, it was, it was, it was added in that. It was, it was one of the uh, groups of people that was mentioned as a stakeholder. Because okay. they're downtown property. Right. Size. I mean, it's, I, I think, just to comment on it, I think it's going to be a little bit, so the housing authority does not answer to anyone. They have a board of directors and trustees that are appointed by the governor and also by the mayor, but they don't, they really are not funded. They're totally separate from the city. It's federal. Um, so yeah, it's all federal and state money, so we have no jurisdiction. Um, and they actually pay us all the paper as of a few yeah. days ago. Right. They successfully. Yes, and if you notice their gardens in the back of this building over here are all demolished because you know, there's an issue right now with the housing administration and what the tenants can do. So I think there's like a real disconnect. And in that aspect, yeah, it's, it's a little ugly. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know how far we would get with trying to develop a partnership with them. 
special right now. So I, I, I would propose that we take that those little tasks off this subject line, you know, the, the increased stakeholder awareness of all the campaign. Because uh, we also talked in that category about the business yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, and the forest. Is there someone in, in the, on the commission who is interested in doing that? And in, in, in taking on number three, in liaison. I'm going to go on and read four and five. Four, evaluate the tree plantings we do, beginning with house tree this spring. And five, include preemptive planning for pests. Oh, which we need to put you on the agenda. I can say something about it right now. Um, let's save it for other All right. questions. All right. Go back to three just for a second. Uh, uh -huh. I was going to reach out to the person whose name I forgot, the person who came here from the Denton. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to follow up with her and try and see if she could find a way that Tree North Hampton could promote uh, planting trees and property. Okay. So that's one one step. In other words, she left saying, "Oh, I could have trees." Yeah. And so, um, and there's a bunch of individual sites that, uh, downtown that look like that. Uh, tree, and I'd like to work through her. Or tree, you know, and work through her. That's good. I'm interested in that too, in the sense of uh, contacting. If that involves sort of um, contacting businesses who might have vacant sites. Right, so, so the theory is she's, she probably has a, the, the contacts for all, many of the businesses, because she's, a, and um, so the thought was that Trina can go and say, is there a way that we can, there's something we can say, we can go meet and have to be involved in the email system, this offer that we have to try and plant trees, um, rather than look up the individual property owners. Okay, so it sounds like we have a team working on that. That's yes. good. Uh, it sounds like we uh, we have a Molly. <laughs> we have one of our two Mollies working on include preemptive planning for pests. I'm going to go ahead and give you a couple minutes. Let me just say what I was going to. I looked over the um, this handout from Molly Froelicker, and um, that was the first time I actually read it. Um, and I was thinking it was the one that says forest pest um, preparedness plans, a plan for Massachusetts communities. Yeah. I thought what it was going to be was a plan that we would be able oh. to just do, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's how it's like all the points that you should include when you write a plan, <laughs> and it's very um, it's a little overwhelming to read. It makes it sound like a huge project to do this. Yeah. Um, so it, I'm wondering if you, know, you can go back to her and ask Molly. Is there like a top five things we should be thinking about? I mean, can you distill it for us? She may be able to do that. Do you think you could reach out to her by um, email and then maybe sure. a phone call follow-up? Yeah. Maybe Worcester has a plan. Well, I started, so after I read this, no, I just read it today and realized, oh, wow, you know, she talks about that there's other communities that have plans and yeah. we can learn from Midwest where they've already been through this. Yeah. So I just started dabbling into that to see what I could find and I came up with a couple, you know, places that have a plan. Um, one's in Vermont. Um, and the other ones in Michigan, it's again, it's more like how to make a plan. But they gave a case study about a city that had a plan. So, and you know, are we, are we talking mostly involved. about the uh, uh, the Ashford? Ash Ash That's what these plans have to do, but they don't. They have to do with, but um, not necessarily. It could include other things too. Yeah, but I mean, that's our 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 most urgent risk. Yeah, and it's as close as the Berkshires. And the closest town mm -hmm. to us is. Um, Wilbraham. Wilbraham. I just checked it today, um, the up-to-date map. That's the only place in the valley that has it. There's a bunch of communities out in the Berkshires that have it. Um, and there's no other place, there's nowhere in Hampshire or Franklin County that has it. And then there's some in the northeast part of the state and near Boston area. I know you looked up today how many public ash trees we have. We have 300 and something ash trees in Northampton. Okay. Uh, 
All right, so uh, would you be willing to stay on this project? Yeah, uh, uh, pursue it a little bit I more. I have a feeling that you, you can get a distilled to do. I mean, any one of those communities that's already dealing with it, you yeah. can just find one. I'll, I'll pursue it a little bit more and just take some next steps and see mm -hmm. what's out there already. In. If it's Emerald Ash for um, Michigan and Illinois and Ohio, mm -hmm. would be three. They, that's where it started. Uh, Okay. All right. Okay. Sure. And then the the point, the number four, which is evaluate the tree plantings we do. It seems like we're we're doing that in real time, and that in terms of the health of the trees, we need to give it a little time before we're able to determine whether the underwire trees, for example, were a good were a good fit for South Street. Presumably they have to go through at least one winter. Yeah. And see what happens in winter. I, I well, Tree Northampton does plan on photographing at least every setback tree at some interval regularly. Okay. So that'll be a kind of a record. Um, not it won't be absolutely accurate, anyway, but we have a list and we'll return each time and photograph each setback. Okay, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go into the bullet points that didn't raise the rise to the top of one through five. Good. All right. So do we all? Do we one all? One more thing about. Oh yes, please. Evaluating the planting. Yes. Has someone done that with last year's planting? You know, there were a lot last year that, uh, when I was planting them, I had some questions whether they were going to make it or not. So have they been evaluated last year's? Last year's trees. Uh oh, Davy. I mean, Davy. Did well, yeah, Davy did, 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 did that, but we haven't. This sheet, this spring, no. Some of them we have, just by the sheer driving by them. But we need to now that we're getting the warmer weather, we'll take the list that we have of what 245 trees we've <coughs> planted over the last two years, and we'll take that list and we'll start to go and actually look at it and actually announce the time of the tree trunks broke. It's got to go. We'll have some time to do it. We have to know the term, you know, whether the tree is made, whether it's not, or whether it's what's what's the issue with it, and it's okay to put water bag on it. But I think the majority of the trees that we we saved, there almost everything. There were there, the, the, there were some of the sweet gums yeah. in general had a problem. They just didn't fare too. But, but I mean, not the boulders of sweet gums, but the happy days of sweet gums were a problem. There were only six of them, but probably at least half of them didn't. As I recall, their their root system was really tangled, tangled up. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and so it may be that that I was going to source wherever we got those from. Happy days. Yeah. yeah, I think maybe we'll never get happy days again. I'm so happy. Well, enough to the species, maybe where they came from. Oh, yeah. good point. Right. Um, uh, and a few of the tulip trees died. It was two. But generally, for how bad it was, that's pretty. Yeah. Generally. yeah. yeah. Although I'm yeah. seeing other trees that were planted years before oh, yeah. that are really strong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think yes. particularly the yeah. London plane trees. Yeah. There's yeah. something yeah. going on around the London plane trees where they have hot half by like halfway. Have you seen yeah. that yeah. picture? Yeah. It was, well, sure. this, this year, a lot of them suffered that track. I was just as well. Yeah. London plane doesn't get anything. It's a good one. We had one plane tree over on uh, Bay Street that died over by the coal plant. That would be just well. That, that, that tree was uh, pop up. I'm going to keep us so, zoomed out if right. I could. Yeah. Um, th there is one more priority that I feel like came out of our uh, Arbor Day uh, award ceremony, Rich, in our conversation with Alan Snow. Yeah. I I I have this nagging. <laughs> Worry that our, our tree keeper data is gonna it, it's just it's just poorly housed in tree keeper uh, and I and I worry that it's gonna go out of date very quickly because it's it's a, it's, a sh it's just a shitty database. Well, it's not gonna go out of date. It's not gonna go out of date. Because but well, it's already out of date if you think about how the drought probably killed lots of trees that were judged maybe in fair or poor condition by Davy and now they're outright right, dead. So we'll have to do the other thing and make the rotations and the chain. So that's that's what that's what the yeah. job is going to do. But um, 
So we were talking to, to Alan about the uh, database they use, they self created, designed themselves in Amherst that is more hooked in with their work order system and and sounds like it's just a more user friendly system. It's not hooked into the work order system, it's strictly just for inventory. So they so when Alan wants to make an uh, work order, he has to go to Amherst uh, Request Tracker, which I think they have the same thing that we have, and they make the work order separate. So it's two separate uh, systems. Okay. Well, what was the advantage? Because when we discussed it with with Alan, it sounded like there were numbers of advantages. Well, the advantage the, there's really well one is cost. They don't pay for it. They don't pay for it, but the problem is, is that right now I can't see the development. We're having our own issues internally with our IT and getting just basic support. So because this is how is the daily and they maintain it, I don't have to, if it blows up, they fix it. Yeah. They restore it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. If we lose it, you know, and it's on us. If we, if we lose the data, if we look, if we house the data in our own server, that's huge. And we actually, so someone here has to maintain that. Yeah. And presently, where IT is working on configuring itself to actually better serve the city, and that is one of the places. And, and this is a conversation that we had. I wasn't there. It was a meeting that we had in our office about municipality, which is now going to be the city's new water system. They want to examine the tree keeper data, they want to examine it to see what kind of platform they would have to build to make that make a work order, build a work order system around that data and if they even can do it and even if it's even worth it. Okay. So right. So it sounds like two thousand seventeen is not the year to be met to I don't think so. I also we're also going to be a pilot community for the new rollout of Tree Keeper Eight. So I signed up for a pilot which Tree Keeper Eight has a lot of um, Features the, the mapping features are much different. They're more like actually a Google map, so I, I'm encouraged by that. There's also a lot, a lot of updates to um, kind of how clunky the desktop version is, which is the one that I use, where the things are kind of wonky on certain things, you know. But again, you know, you're buying into someone else's data package and for the end. So I want to get through using GTPR seven and see what A has to offer okay. and then go forward with it. Okay, so I, I agree with you. I, I officially list. withdraw my okay. interest well, in having that be a priority you. for 2017. <laughs> All right, okay. Thank you for that clarification. I think that we already hit upon the goals to tasks when it comes to the various priorities. Timeline, I we didn't have time to actually, although we, we did talk about a few things, but maybe next time we meet we can get a little bit more down in the details about some timeline. So I'm going to move us on to uh, an update from Tree Market. Well, uh, lots of tree planning going on. It seems like May 20th was a really long time ago, mm -hmm. and it was a month ago. Um, but that was a really exciting day, and we were particularly thrilled the mayor came by and um, talked to a lot of the volunteers. We spent quite a bit of time, very encouraging, and um, we just had a wonderful response from volunteers throughout the city and folks right there in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. sending that out to the it's nice to have people there. They loved it. I got a lot of great feedback. Yeah, there's a lot Good. of people from the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. And, um, we um, had great support. Susan Ryan was not here, opened her house, and we had sandwiches, and the guy gave us pizza. And oh, nice. It was, it was People did get a chance to talk to one another and some of that community involvement, and a lot of great feedback in the press. So there was that project. And um, since um, then, we've uh, rotated tilled, rot tilled space at the community garden and our for getting trees in there as a little nursery, which is an exciting project. I'm really enthusiastic about that. And then, um, so it's moving along. We, um, and then really what's going on is the planting of trees out there. Rob's really being, stepping up as the leader almost all the time, being there with volunteers. Mm -hmm. Folks out there, up in there. Um, Did you say triple front? No, I said incredible. Oh, incredible. Yeah, incredible <laughs> folks I heard, out oh, there okay, I I helping plant the trees. 
and having a lot of fun doing it, I think, too. Good. That way. It's been good. It's good. Heard there are new people coming on. I think that when we first started, we, we had sort of a narrow, small penetration of the community and definitely growing. I think the challenge is to keep it organized and keep everyone coming back. But, but uh, just in the last, since South Street, I've met some really enthusiastic, hard work. But then again, there's this weekend coming up, and I'm not even sure there's so I started today getting the word out for this weekend to some people who um, we particularly want to come back because they're so good at it. And um, then we'll, we'll widen the net tomorrow if we don't have our core group filling up these slots. Because um, there is great value in having people who understand the importance of planting trees very carefully and patiently. Um, Although we do have one volunteer who likes to dig holes, that does not want to slow down at all. So we're trying to figure out a way to work out a model that that could be a contribution without, um, you know, endangering the trees in any way. That's um, what's going on, and then. Um, Pretty soon we'll start talking about fall, I guess. Yeah, actually on that. Can you add anything? Yeah, I wanted to add about this in the fall. One of the things that's happened between BPW and Green Northampton is that we're often working pretty close to, to when the tree is either must be ordered or put in the ground or dig safe. And this year I'm gonna make a big effort to really work on the tree, getting all the trees sighted early, like in the summer. A lot of them is alive so that they're already deep safe before it's time to plant them so that we don't end up throwing a whole bunch of deep safes on Rich's desk the week before the deep safes are due. Which is the way it's, it's been working that day. It's hard to explain. South Street really added to that because the time between when we knew we were going to do South Street and then when we wanted to do South Street was short. So there were, it was, and that, that seems to work poorly to have them close to each other, the, 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 the decision where to plant and the dig safe. So we're gonna, I'm gonna really try, Rich, to, to have a lot of the fall, all the fall, what's gonna happen in the fall. I'm gonna go for 30 days though. Right, but if I have them ready so that 30 days before the planting you have them instead of a week before, which has been, I, have, I think that, and because what happens is when they get to Rich a week before, then if, Rich is doing something else and doesn't have any done, we can't line up volunteers. So there's a whole bunch of steps that have to fall in place correctly. And, and we have not been uh, efficient at that. We have a short lead time on volunteers. Short lead time. Yeah. If I could make a request, all these things that you're learning about how to sequence things, if you can document them, then it becomes institutionalized mm -hmm. and not just embedded in people's memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very good idea. And I think that. I mean, the, through the winter, a lot of work was going on getting ready for the spring planting, and our scope was setbacks and street trees. And then the South Street came along, which was an incredible opportunity, but it was a tremendous amount of work yeah. as well. And so all effort went into that, and then a scramble back to get um, this other planting yeah. that's going on now. Like so it was a real, um, it took a lot of agility, and. A lot, a lot of physical work out there, citing those trees. So it was huge, but um, it was also exhilarating in the fact that so much got done and, and a lot of attention came to it. So people are more open than ever to and appreciative of the history of the work that's been done and going forward. So you know, I'm here for having a more structured approach and knowing what's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, just as you learn, because a lot of it you're just learning as you go, but just document it so that the next time it's just a little smoother. You know, understanding that 
life is what happens in between making plans. Weather's a big factor too. Because mm. yeah. we can plan out a few weeks in advance what we're going to do and line up. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But then when it really comes down to it, it's the weather and it's volunteers' lives, and there's a lot that does change. So it's never. Really yeah. I mean, yeah. we in the back of our heads, we have to be it could dry up and we could not be planting in September. It might be pushed into October. We'd be planting now. Right, right. And we are. Yeah, right. Okay, would you all like to say anything else before we move on to any other business? Yeah, I have, um, yeah, I sent to uh, yeah, uh, uh, Lily and Richard um, the information that I, I came across. Um, through a uh, program I was involved with. Uh, it's the United States Department of, of uh, Agriculture's APHIS program, which is Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, something like that. They're the folks that run the, um, the quarantine area out in Worcester from Asian Longhorn Beetle. I attended a, uh, I called up to attend a compliance course with, with what they're doing out there. And uh, I was asked by a, a, a DCR forester if I was interested in having a program on um, tree pests being taught out, being taught here in Hampshire County. I, I thought, um, sure, but I'm signing up for another course right now. So uh, a few weeks after that, I went out to Worcester and um, was very nicely uh, introduced to, um, uh, you know, um, Ryan Vasquez, and he's the head of the program, and uh, contacted by Linda Hubley, who's a supervising officer there. and. Um, we had a conversation, which I think uh, the folks from Tree North Hampton and Rich and your chairman can see about offering a program both here in the valley, uh, which would be good for like uh, NAA or ISA. I don't know if you guys are uh, looking for CEs, SC, SC, um, continuing education credits, but would be also good for layman volunteers. Uh, so right now I'm working towards putting together. Um, what might be one or two educational programs uh, fulfilling the Tree Northampton's goals of education um, with a program that would be offered sometime around mid-July, perhaps up until like mid-August. So I got like a couple weeks to like throw this thing together and then find places and, and fit this all together. So that's coming down the, the road. Um, I talked to, to, I work also as a property manager, a property monitor for the CR of the city through Kestrel Land Trust. Mm -hmm. So on their board, they have a few foresters that might be interested in, in going to a class. As well as they have some friends in the environmental place around here. So um, I think we have some people that can attend and I just want to make it available to, you know, <coughs> this community here, um, as well as what we're trying to do with treatment and community education. So, yeah, so keep the year of the stone. So I just finished the conversation like a uh, what do you call it, proposal uh, to um, USDA today and I should be hearing you know as soon as she gets back to me uh, if you have any questions if you're going to be offering CEUs uh, contact all the landscape and tree companies right now they're the ones who you know, benefit from that. yeah I've, I've run that through um, my mind I'm, I'm looking at maybe five to 25 as a scale of people in it and one of the things I'm really interested in is trying to get like young people into it like high school kids so we can like show them like USDA employees doing their job front line the green collar job all that kind of business uh, but yeah that's a, a great idea and every time I, I talk about setback trees I think about landscapers I can't help it it's like gosh if a landscaper could be offering this customer this tree you know it just boggles my mind but um, that's a good point. Thanks. So, you know, as I put it together and we see if we have that 5 to 25 or, you know, have the proper venue where we can teach, even if the program's really going to happen. Uh, yeah. You know, no more to happen in a few more days. Okay. And if you if you have more details, you can send them to me and I'd be happy to pass it yeah, to sure. the full commission. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. Yeah. Any other business? Not anticipated by the chair or anyone else on the commission. <laughs> yes, I was just wondering. Um, I I know you've got a lot going on, Terry, with the minutes. But is it at all possible to just email the minutes e even like a day before the meeting? Yes, I'll try to do that. All right, just I'm not on another commission at this point. Okay. 
So this is solely the only issue. It would give us uh, the chance to review them before the meeting and then save people. Okay. If people feel like that would be beneficial. I'll still yeah. print some out because not everybody has laptops, though. Right. Has the activity that we've done before. Who, who, needs pa who needs a paper version of the minutes when they come to a meeting? Anybody? Not if we, we Jay would like Jay would like a, a paper version. Anybody else? I would probably want paper. Okay. Sometimes I probably I want the paper too, but but I also would like to read it ahead of time so I didn't have to take up the time reading it here. Okay. All right. And then if we could double sign just to again. We are the tree commission. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Point well taken. We have, we have to press the double side. We have, we have no copier that works. So okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank, thank you. Learning curve. But thank, thank you for what you do. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I would like. I, I. I would like to second that. It's lovely when they come in ahead of time, um, because frankly, I, I. I was feeling like I couldn't really take all this in without holding the whole group up. Yeah. Um, so and 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 so it's it's an ideal to shoot. Any other business? All right, we're on to our to-do list. And okay. we're gonna get out of here by 5.30. All right. Let me know if I missed anything. Uh, let's see, Rich, send the breakdown of the tree planting this year to Lily. Um, as an ongoing project, place water bags on trees planted the past couple of years if necessary. And respond to the resident of Montauk Street regarding the neighborhood based tree planting. Uh, Lily, review the manual of the Traffic and Property Commission, contact Ryan O'Neill to petition for the addition of the need for trees for traffic calling. Um, and I have work on goal number one along with Molly and me, which includes this neighborhood-based tree planting subcommittee. Uh, Todd's absent, but I have him working on goal number two and the second goal number one. Jay, I have you working on goal number two with Todd and Jen. Uh, Jen received the tree planting guidelines from Alicia on Sunday and emailed to Lily as soon as possible while you're on vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, and work on goal number two with Todd and Jay. Um, I'm working on goal number one with Lily and Molly. And Molly's working on that. I'm going to reach out to Molly F for the. Um, top five for the pest plan. Uh, Rob working on goal number five with Molly. And do tree sightings further in advance of summer, or excuse me, fall tree plantings. And document learnings about tree plantings today. And going forward. So helpful having Marilyn here to summarize yeah, the, the work kidding. we need to wow. do. I, I just want to give you a huge shout out. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It, it just wraps everything up in a bow. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, so it's thanks. still posted on the uh, spreadsheet, so I usually do that like within 24 hours of our meeting. One comment. Yeah. Um, maybe I heard you, Rob. Okay. Rob was going to work with me, not on the pest preparedness thing, but on the um, reaching out to the yeah. neighborhood associations. Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you mean the Downtown Business Association, right? That's what I meant. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. And since um, Todd is a, is a member of the DNA, mm -hmm. you might want to just, oh. you know, just say, hey, we're doing this, and see if he has any thoughts. All right. Uh, I, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Oh, it's someone's got well, to, to do it. Do it. Oh. So just waiting you, for you can just say so. Move. How about if I say? How about if I change that to a so move? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't make the motion. I move that we adjourn. Okay. Thank you. Thank and thank you then Molly. Rob is seconding it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>